Hi there, welcome to the latest edition of the PCA Lockdown Vodcast series sponsored by our good friends at Green King. This week we're talking all things women's cricket. How far has the game come and to what extent has its momentum been halted by the coronavirus pandemic? My stellar lineup this week includes Alex Hartley, a current World Cup winner, having played a key role in England's 2017 success on home soil. Claire Taylor, the first woman in history to become one of Wisdom's five cricketers of the year in 2009. She's a World Cup, World T20 and Ashes winner. And like Claire, another run getter extraordinaire, the one and only Charlotte Edwards, 20 years as an England player, tennis captain, where she led the team to World Cup, World T20 and Ashes success. Uh, ladies, uh, a very warm welcome. Um, Claire, I want, I want to start with you because we're going to get on to the pandemic and, and how it might have affected the game. But I, I'm very keen to kind of chart the evolution of, of the women's game and, and perhaps take us back to when you started and, and the choices that you had to make and the sacrifices you had to make to, to pursue your cricket career. Yeah, back, uh, back when uh, Lottie and I started, um, cricket wasn't professional. Um, it was something that you did because you loved it. Um, and it was, uh, it was uh, well supported. Um, the WCA merged with the uh, ECB towards the end of the 1990s, I think, and the ECB took over the women's game. So um, we, were, we were well supported, but um, it was certainly something you did um, on the side of having a job. Um, or or whilst you were a student. So, um, you know, I look at the youngsters coming into the game now, like, like Alex, and, and there's a professional pathway there now. There's, 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 a, there's, there's things to aspire to in terms of uh, being able to make your way in the game, but also being paid to do that at the same time, which I think is really great. Did you have to put your career on hold? I'm sure I read somewhere that there was a sacrifice. You know, you were earning a, a good money in a job and then to pursue your career and, and your kind of England dreams, that had to go, which meant a financial sacrifice. Yeah, that's right. So uh, I left university. Um, so 21, 22, had myself a graduate job, just made it into the England setup, um, sort of reserved for the 97 World Cup that uh, Lottie played in in India. Um, and for a while, I managed to juggle both of those things. So the, the cricket and the job. Um, and I trained before work and I train after work. And then um, after the World Cup in 2000, I sort of had a, a real choice. I, I knew if I wanted to be a better cricketer that I'd have to spend more time playing cricket. Um, and that meant playing cricket, not just in the English summer months, but all the way through the year. So going to somewhere like Australia and New Zealand. Um, and yeah, that meant that I had to uh, give up that, that graduate job. Um, I gave up, you know, living in London with um, one of my best mates, uh, moved back home to mum and dad and, and spent six months in the UK and six months um, overseas, which is, you know, what a, a lot of young cricketers do uh, in order to progress their game. Lottie, sound familiar? The, the, the graduate job was the bit that surprised me. I don't think that they exist anymore. But I mean, a familiar, a familiar story you would have seen. I, I guess a, a lot of players have to make similar sacrifices. And I guess one or two who might have opted for the job and the career because there just simply wasn't the money in cricket. Yeah, I mean, we lost a lot of players to actually to to the game because of that very reason you know they wanted jobs they wanted to move out of home and, and buy houses so you know it simply wasn't an option to to come you know to have cricket and, and, a, and a job um you know I remember Claire doing exactly what she did and everyone was just in awe of her really you know she wanted to be the best player and I remember turning up at Guildford and watching her you know running before sessions then going into into the nets and you know like she was completely committed to being the best player but you know, it was a loss to her. Um, she must really envy the girls now, um, uh, probably, because, um, you know, the opportunities that the young girls have now um, to be the best player they be, and that's all we wanted to do. We, you know, both me and Tails just wanted to be the best players we could be in. And at times we had to sacrifice a lot, but, um, but it was all worth it in the end, you know, the success we had as a team. And, you know, we may not make the money or made the money the, the players, current players do, but, um, you know, we've got lots of memories that we can both look back on. Indeed, and we'll, we'll cover off some of those memories as, as we go. I mean, Alex, the, the, the ladies have mentioned it, more attractive 
I guess, an option now, becoming a professional cricketer. Congratulations on your, on your recent regional retainer, um, which, I, which means you, you probably can't do much practice at the minute because I guess you're, you're furloughed at the time of recording. But at least it must take some of the financial pressure off and enable you to kind of concentrate on maybe staying fit if you can't hit balls and bowl balls. Yeah, it, it's a real strange time, isn't it? You know, the rumour has it we're going to be able to train in the next couple of weeks, which is fantastic. But for me, it's just such a bonus because if I'd have lost my England contract two, even a year ago, two or three years ago, there's no option for me to be a professional cricketer. And thank goodness now that that's an option because now I don't have to think, right, what am I going to do post-career? How am I going to cope with life now I'm only 26 years old I haven't really been to school I've got no qualifications um, and I'm lucky enough now that I'm one of the first domestic professional cricketers in the game. Yeah and, and I guess the pandemic and we'll, we'll touch on this has impacted the, the women's game because I think Claire Connor's vision was 40 professional contracts with the, the central contracts in it in addition it, it hasn't quite amounted to that the, the financial constraints I guess everyone's feeling the, 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 the pinch a, a little bit so it's 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 not all roses out there it's a, it's a tough time at the minute it is but you we've got to respect the ECB they've had to make changes you know nobody thought there was going to be a global pandemic and cricket we weren't going to play professional cricket all year um, the ECB have really shown their commitment with these domestic contracts yeah it's not life-changing but it really does help with the situation that we're in uh, uh, Claire, Alex played in the in the last World Cup um, successful side. Obviously, that that famous game at Lords against India, which we will get to. But but you've won World Cups as as well. The, the two thousand and nine, I mean, it's an extraordinary year for yourself in terms of the runs you scored, but for the team. But I guess my question is: after all that success, did you get a feeling that a legacy was being left, or that young girls and, and young boys were being inspired by that team that you played in and Lottie led? I think um, during the year we were very we were absolutely focused on well we had this buzz phrase around world domination um, and we absolutely wanted to you know there was an opportunity to win two World Cups in a year and we played the Australians in a one day series and uh, and Ashes as well that that summer so so we, we really wanted to set out our stage not not just in terms of winning but also playing some really great cricket as well and i'd like to hope that we had left a, some kind of um some kind of legacy there but I, I think we talk about that after all world cups don't we if we work you know if we think back to 1993 and i don't know about you lot but that's certainly a that was certainly a key point where suddenly i saw role models you know, um, out on the pitch at Lords, they beat New Zealand in the final at Lords uh, in 1993. Claire Taylor, the other Claire Taylor, was playing, and and you think, right, there is a group of role models, and 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 hopefully, you know, 1993, and then we we come through to 2009, 2017. There there are groups of players that will inspire young girls and young boys to to pick up a bat, to pick up a ball, and you know, to get involved in our great game. Lottie, that uh, 2009 phrase, world domination, that sounds like a Charlotte Edwards phrase, if, if ever I'd heard one. I don't know if you, you kind of came up with that, but it's an important point that Claire makes going back to 1993. I mean, coming up as a, I mean, you would be playing for England at such a young age, but c can you remember being inspired by other women who were playing the game or, or did you kind of fall into it by, by accident? Well, I, I, I got involved in cricket through my dad and, and my family, but I remember being sat at home. I didn't get to the game at Lords. My dad was playing cricket that day, but I remember sitting in front of the TV on, and watching it on BBC. And that was, you know, you talk about those moments in your life. That was the moment I thought, I, I want to do that. I want to be there and I want to I want to play cricket for England because I'd not really seen it from my own eyes. And, and I was really lucky to have a couple of those um, players um, that played um, for East Anglia at the time, Susie Kitts and Jill Smith. And, and those players, you know, and still to this day, I, you know, I have a lot to thank them for because they inspired me and I was lucky enough to play with them when I was growing up. So, you know, it, it, we talk a lot about role models in sport, but we have got some wonderful role models in women's sport right now. And, and I think it, it does make such a big difference because up until that point, Steffi Graf was my role model because that's all I saw. I saw tennis on TV, and but then I started to see cricket, and then it, you know, then it, it leaves, and then you start to believe you can do it, and 
uh, and I was really lucky to be able to do it. Yeah, it's a really good point you, you make about, about seeing those role models. Do, do you get a sense, Lottie, that the last World Cup success, because it was watched by so many, I've got boys, I've got 13, 15 year old boys, but we watched that game and they were jumping around on the sofa, high fiving when we won that match. Um, and it, it wasn't just young girls that it was inspiring, it was just young cricketers that it, it was inspiring. But did you, do you sense that that World Cup was in somehow, it was some way different to the, the 2009 success in terms of the momentum? That it kind yeah, of definitely, because it, it, I mean, it reached so many people, didn't it? I mean, the glo global audience, you know, the fact that boys, young boys, you know, I, and, you know, even young men come up to you and talk about the World Cup win and they watch it, you know, they remember, you know, Anya Shrubsoul and, and, you know, it's, it's just such a, you know, it was such an iconic game. Um, and I think everyone will always remember that game. You didn't ever even think that game could even be better than it was, wasn't it, <laughs> last year? I mean, I was very lucky to be at both of those games and they were both unbelievable games of cricket. Um, yeah, and we were very fortunate that we had both of them at, at Lords and, in, you know, two England wins. Alex, what was it like to play in? Because um, it was nervy watching, but you played a, a key part with, with the ball in, in defending that, I guess, slightly under par total. Is it, can you look back now and, and see it differently? And what was it like at the time? You look, I look back now and I think, how on earth did we win that game? I know. Because I, when you're in the moment, you just feel like you're in control. And we said, as long as we can keep the run rate at sixes, we will win this game. And we were like, try and stay ahead of the run rate. Like, we've got this, we've got this. And watching it back, it was only on the TV not so long ago. I was like, how, how did we win that? But it was just such an incredible moment. And I think that's why that team had so much success, because we just concentrated on ourselves. We had no interest in what anyone else was doing and we really like just focused on what we were doing as a team. There was that lovely picture on Twitter of Anya Shrubsoul as a young girl. I think she must have been 10 or 11. I, I don't know from what game it was, but watching at Lords and then, of course, taking centre stage at Lords. And I thought that kind of summed everything up. You know, a, a, a young girl who was inspired to play cricket and then... 10, 11 years later, in inspiring the next generation. That, that's kind of what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, trying to get Anya to recreate that photo 20 years later was a nightmare. You know, she was like, I don't want to do it. But, you know, it was just, it just shows what cricket is about. You know, she, she dreamt of that moment her whole life and she was the standout performer of that day. And, and rightly so, you know, she's a fantastic cricketer and her and herself will have inspired so many seam bowlers. Now, when I used to play cricket, I used to have the odd nightmare, as we all do, about going out to, to bat with, without my bat. And, and because I was doing this vodcast today, I, I had a bizarre dream last night where I, I was picturing Jenny Gunn dropping that catch. And we've, you know, it was a horrendous moment. We've all dropped catches like that. I know I have. I remember Joe Denley, a good friend of mine, dropping Kane Williamson in New Zealand, which was even easier. So we've all dropped it. But, but in that moment, I kind of thought, my God. You know, England didn't go on to win that game, and and the sliding doors was 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 very very different. But um, someone that's been such a superb servant of England, I was like, please don't. I remember watching at the time, being I'm sure we're under control. Please do not lose this game now because that will be tough to take. But uh, and you pulled it out the bag. Yeah, you can see when Jen drops that catch, and everyone the crowd goes wild because they think we've won, and you, and then they realise she's dropped it. You can see, and you go, it's okay. I've got this. Don't worry. And she says that to James, like, it's okay. Because at the end of the day, it is. It's, it's just the game of cricket. But, yeah, you know, it was the World Cup final and a pretty big moment. Claire, where, were we, where were you the, the, during that, uh, that last World Cup success? Were you, were you at, yeah, were you at, you were there, you were at Hollywood. I was, I was at HQ. You were watching it at Lords. Yeah, 2017. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was... Uh, uh, Chair of the uh, Women's Subcommittee uh, at the MCC, so I had the uh, the wonderful well, honour of uh, the chairing house. chairing the committee room for the day. So we invited back. Um, so I think there were quite a number of World Cup um, winners there that day. So we had a group of the 2009, and then um, the uh, president was entertaining members of the 1993 World Cup team um, in the uh, in the grandstand. So there were there were a number of uh, ex. Uh, uh, former international cricketers uh, there that day but it, I mean it was brilliant I tell you what though Alex um, it got to about four o'clock maybe half past four and, and and I'd finished my official duties for the day and I thought well it's time for a drink now isn't it I can 
you know, I've done the speeches, I've done all my official stuff, so I, I'll, I'll have a drink. And um, it wasn't looking that good for you guys. So, you know, I had a drink and then you got a wicket. I thought, right, well, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, uh, yeah, I was quite emotional at the end of the day, let's just say. Yeah, it, it was a, it was it was a good afternoon. Yeah, I can imagine it was a, it, it was emotional for, for those of you who have kind of been there and, and, and then seen it. I mean, to, to, to what extent has the game just moved on? I'm thinking, I think, Lottie, you went on the record as saying Elise Perry, probably the, the best player that the game's ever seen, or something along those, those lines. To, to what extent has the game kind of kicked on a notch? I mean, you haven't been retired that long, but, but from, from your time and, and Tails' time, do you, do you sense that the game is getting better, more powerful, um, and with a better spectacle, uh, and, and are, the, are the girls kind of aware of, of of all of that? Yeah, I think I think what I've seen in the last four years, you certainly the professionalism now, and you know they're all athletes now, aren't they? They're you know, and that's that's something I've I've certainly picked up. I don't I don't see a massive difference in the bowl. Like I don't I don't look at the bowling attacks around the world and like think they've changed massively. It's just the just the batting now, the the power hitting, the depth. That, of batting now I think is incredible and and some of the fielding you know it's um you know it's you know when you're looking at the top four or five teams it's they're really good games to watch and you know I've you know I'm you know the ashes last summer although it didn't work out for him you know the first the first couple of ODIs were really good games of cricket with some you know it, they weren't high scoring, but it was just really good to watch. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's just really. I think that's what people are starting to see it for now. It's, they're not comparing it to the men's game. It's just you know they're proper cricketers, and um, you know they work really really hard. And yeah, it's enjoyable to watch. And of course, the, the World T Twenty, Alex, that final at the, at the MCG. Correct me if I'm wrong. Were you out there? Were you were you on commentary during that? I'm sure yeah. if I, I remember listening to it and heard, heard you on comms. I mean, that's that's great that you're kind of carving out that that niche as, as well and, and doing so well. But what was that like? I guess like double-edged sword in some respects, not to be playing in it, but to be there and witness the crowds. I mean, if you're not going to play, it's the second best option, isn't it? So I was I was chuffed to be there, and it was one of those occasions where they talked about we've sold out the MTG, we've sold ninety thousand tickets, and I didn't believe it. You know, I didn't believe it until I was out in the middle for the toss and I was looking around and I was thinking, this is incredible. It was mm. just amazing. And it, it's something that words can't really dis describe because you've got 90,000 people all cheering for women's cricket. And it's something that I'm sure I can speak for the other two. Like we've, we've dreamed of that for, for that to happen for so long. I mean, yeah. somebody said to me probably two years ago, oh yeah, we're going to sell the MCG. I was like, yeah, whatever. Like... <laughs> You know, you've never got more than twenty thousand people there. Like, how you, how on earth are you going to do that? Um, and you could just sense as the tournament went on, couldn't you? I mean, Alex was out there, like it just kept gaining momentum. The Aussies were just not playing well at all, but they would get just getting through. And you just felt like it was just everything was just with them. And it got to that game at, at Sydney, and you never thought they were going to get on. And they managed to get on the uh, and, and avoid the rain. And and then you just knew they were going to win the final because it just it. I mean, the stars aligned, and like Alex said, that day was up there as one of the the best days. If you're an you know an ex player or just someone interested in the game, it was it was unbelievable, unbelievable day. Katy Perry, I mean, who? What a day! Yeah, yeah, Katy Perry. A lot of people thought she was going to take the new ball and run in for Australia. They, they got the other <laughs> one, and they the the um. Where were you on, on that? Because you said Alex was out there. Did you not manage to, 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 to snag some sort of kind of Claire Taylor-esque kind of expensive hospitality box? Where were you, Lottie? I was in, yeah, I was in, I got invited into, um, um, yeah, the a main box there. So I was, I was, I had one of the best seats in the house, if I'm honest. So I didn't have to work on the final. I'd done all the previous <laughs> games. As soon as England got knocked out, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to the final. Go. Enjoy um, it, plus wine. Yeah, I probably enjoyed it and just took it all in. Because when you work on it, you don't really necessarily take it all in and it was just incredible I, I was sat next to Claire Connor and we were just we just were speechless at times because we never ever thought we'd see that many people at a women's cricket event yeah I want to get on to, to, to Claire Connor because she's someone that you all know so well she's been instrumental in pushing the women's game uh, to, to the forefront and of course she's going to be the new uh, MCC president Claire just what kind of statement is that not only for the MCC but, but what does it say about Claire Connor? 
Uh, it's a significant uh, appointment, uh, both for Clare and, and for the MCC. For the MCC, it's 230 odd years of male, uh, fairly high ranking, I'd say, in society. Uh, president, um, president's quite a key role in the club, um, both in terms of uh, the, the, the governance side, but also in terms of uh, the figurehead of the club. So for them to uh, appoint uh, a woman is is brilliant. Um, for for Connie, um, it's it's testament to the influence that she's had on the game um, since she first played for England, uh, since she was captain. Um, and her management of the game through the, the ECB and her leadership in terms of pushing forward the, the, the women's game. And I think, you know, Alex, you're one of the uh, first, as you say, professionally domestic uh, female cricketers, and that wouldn't have happened without Connie pushing forward uh, that, that agenda. Um, so I, I, think it's, I think it's really important, and it, it should be incredibly influential, I think, both um, uh, for the MCC, but the, the, the reach of the MCC across the world as well. Yeah, Alice, as a current player, how, how significant to the, to the current crop kind of view someone like Claire Connor, not only with her leading the women's game but at the ECB, but, but getting this, this kind of esteemed position? I mean, it just shows where cricket is heading and where women's cricket is heading. You know, she is a massive advocate for women's cricket. And, you know, without these two here, and without Claire, without the likes of all these girls that have played before me, you know, I wouldn't be lucky enough to be in the situation that I'm in. And it's just credit where credit's due. You know, she deserves this. And yeah, it's, it's just such a positive for women's cricket. Lottie, I, I guess we, we have to look at uh, the, the slight dampener on what was a wonderfully kind of... The cricket was just building, wasn't it? The, the men's game, the World Cup success, the women's, the World T20. Everyone seemed to be going cricket crazy heading into 2020 when this coronavirus pandemic has struck we, we've heard about the men's game getting back we've got the, the test series against the West Indies things that things are happening it's been a bit slower for the for the women I think it's fair to say and I think Claire Connor has come out and said you know we have to respect the fact that mm. that's kind of where the money is and we have to be patient but to what extent is, is it is it a bigger setback for the women's game even given the momentum and it has just not ground to a halt but it, it, it's it's a real shame isn't it yeah, I mean, this was such a massive summer for, for women's cricket with the introduction of the new contracts, the new regional structure at the 100. You know, there were so many things to look forward to. And, yeah, it just feels like it's come at completely the wrong time. But I guess, you know, no one ever, ever would have thought this would have happened. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, it's so disappointing. You know, there's nine months till a, a, a 50 over World Cup. So the players are not getting the amount of cricket they need to get. In before that so yeah it's, it's so disappointing um, but I'm really confident that you know there, there is a commitment from the ECB and I'm absolutely certain you know they are they want to invest in in this new structure and and you know it's part of their strategy you know they want to transform women's and girls cricket they see it as a massive part of, of that strategy so I'm really confident although it's a little blip that players have just got to be really patient and we hopefully will get up and running very soon but I, I absolutely agree with Claire you know the men have to take front seat at the moment because that's where that's how the money you know we are able to do these type of things in the game so um, yeah I'm fully behind her in, in that respect but, um, but I'm really confident we'll get some cricket I really am and hopefully um, sooner rather than later. Absolutely. Claire, are you comfortable with the fact that it's not just women's cricket, is it? That the women's, women's sport in general seems to have been, if not hit harder, then, then certainly seems to be taking more of a back seat. Yeah, you're right. And I think the, the Premier League on the football side just came out and said that they would commit some funding to help the, um, the, the women's Premier League football uh, come back. Um, obviously, you know, safety first. Um, and we're seeing at the top end of the game um, that uh, the... the the, the men's versions of, of of all sports coming back coming back quicker. Um, I, th I, th I th I'm thinking about all of the levels of the game though because uh, we had a, a wonderful summer of cricket last year and 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 Lot is absolutely right. This year this summer the 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 uh, the launch of this inspiring generation strategy from the ECB and the massive amount of investment that was going to come all the way through the game. So all of those youngsters, whether they were male, um, boys or girls, um, that, that were inspired last year by the World Cup win, and there's been nothing for them. You know, my, my little nephew is like, when does all Stars start again? You know, wh what can I do? When can I go and play cricket with my friends at the, 
at the cricket club and there's bits and pieces starting up but we could see a whole season here with you know no with barely any cricket for recreational cricketers um so so for the likes of alex and for the um for the sort of upper levels of the game yes there's absolute hope because there will be some cricket for them of some form at some point in the year but um, there's going to be a, a large number of you know, young girls who have trained all the way through winter and got within one or two weeks of the end of the, you know their winter training uh, period and they were looking forward to county age group cricket or club cricket or whatever and um, and I hope that we can keep those and we can keep that kind of fire alive so that come next year and hopefully we're out of this sort of pandemic um, that we can bring the whole cricket family back together again. Yeah, well said. I think Michael Vaughan wrote a good piece, didn't he, about the, the dangers of possibly losing some of our better cricketers to, to, to golf because golf is one of the few games that can be played at the moment. Hopefully um, that doesn't happen, albeit we don't want to discourage them from, from playing golf. Alex, we, time's kind of beaten us, so um, ladies, I'd like to thank you for your, your contribution. I'm going to leave the kind of last word for you because you are still kind of current and playing and, and, and desperately trying to get back, I would imagine, in that England team to defend a, a World Cup in, in, in 2021. There's a lot of a lot of cricket to be played, hopefully, but before then. But but how is the, the kind of motivation to get back? Yeah, I think, you know what, sometimes a break is what people need. Um, so I think if we can take the positives from it, you know, people have managed to have a little break from cricket. I know I am itching to play again. I, I cannot wait. It's been a long 10 months for me. So since I lost my England contract, I haven't picked up a ball. I haven't done anything. Um, I'm just so, so excited to get back out there. And fingers crossed we get some cricket at, at all levels. Well said. We're going to leave it there. Um, to Charlotte Edwards, to Claire Taylor, uh, and to Alex Hartley, and of course to Green King uh, for sponsoring these podcasts. Uh, that's it for now. Do join us again, ladies. Thanks for your time.